If anybody feels bad that I'm trying to get this fly right now, no. I'm being attacked by a giant fly in my office and then Boomer just ate a giant grasshopper. Are we recording? Are we live? It is officially Taurus season, AKA my birthday month, and it is time for my annual birthday get ready with me. Uh, welcome back to my channel, guys. If you're new, my name is Mosala Torre. Join the family and hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you. Uh, one of the reasons I do this every year is because you guys are such a big part of my life, whether you know it or not. So when I do these get ready with me's every year on my birthday, not on my actual birthday, a few days before, but hopefully going live the same week as my birthday, I personally feel like I'm getting ready with you guys and I just love it. I love sharing my annual look. This year, my birthday looks a little different. I'm spending it at home since we are still in quarantine until May 15th, at least in Los Angeles, until further notice. I mean, I don't know, they keep changing it. So it is what it is. Um, at first, when we went to quarantine, I'm like, oh man, that's such a bummer for people that have to celebrate their birthdays in quarantine. And then they kept extending it and before, I knew it, I'm now spending my birthday in quarantine, which is totally cool. I've never been a big birthday person. Um, I just like to spend the day doing absolutely nothing since I feel like on most days I'm like on a go, go, go kind of schedule. And last, last work day, I'm gonna put my all into today's videos. I'm gonna film a couple more today uh, so I can just, you know, kick up my feet and relax all day tomorrow. Maybe sip a little mimosas, got some white cloths, <laughs> even though I'm more of like a tequila girl. But I don't know if tequila white cloth Ugh. would be a good idea. I don't know if that sounds good. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and just um, get ready. I'm going to do a little skin prep first. If I'm going to sip on something all day, I want something that's not sugary. and It's going to leave that like gross taste in my mouth or have me feeling worse. I mean, obviously alcohol in general doesn't make you feel good. I don't typically uh, drink. Maybe like once a week I'll have a cocktail, but... The more sugar your beverage has, the worse you feel in the morning. So I'm still down for mimosas, but I feel like I can only have one and then I have to move on to something lighter because if you've ever done bottomless mimosas, if you haven't, I mean, <laughs> 21 and up, of course, but if you have not experienced bottomless mimosas on a Saturday afternoon, if you're 21 and up, maybe put that on your bucket list <laughs> as soon as this quarantine's over. If you guys didn't already know this, my favorite color is green. I'm a Taurus. I was born on Earth Day. April 22nd is Earth Day. Uh, I love matcha. Matcha's green. I have green eyes. Green is just my color and not that I can remember, but I don't think I've done a green birthday look, but I didn't want it to be like a typical green that I would go for, like an emerald green. So I found this eyeshadow in my stash. It is the NARS Power Chrome Loose Eye Pigment in the shade Riding High. And I feel like it's like a nice frosted, kind of like minty green. And then I also saw this shadow in this Pat McGrath palette. It's the, I can never read the numbers on here. <laughs> but there's this green down here and I kind of mix the two. Typically I would never do that to you guys because I want you to be able to recreate looks. So I tend to stick to one palette, but because it's my birthday, I'm just gonna hop around. I'm starting off with this Hourglass Eyeshadow Primer. This is a little trick. I'm gonna share this with you guys versus just chatting your ears off real quick. If you've seen my previous videos, I love using a long wearing foundation as eyeshadow prep. I feel like it always looks natural, it lasts a long time, but sometimes you just wanna use whatever foundation it is that you already have. But if you're using a foundation like the one I'm gonna to use today, which is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish, it's more on the dewy side and that can crease on your eyelids. So I just layer a really thin eyeshadow primer and then over top of that go in with a nice thin layer of the same foundation I'm going to be wearing on my face. wanted to give you guys that little bit of that little makeup tip in case you're like, what is she doing on her eye? And I'm just like talking about drinking tequila on my 31st birthday. <laughs> I already told everyone that's on my team, which is, I get asked this question a lot and I feel like um, I've lightly touched on it, but Whenever I say my team, I'm still like a solo artist. It's just me, myself, and I. Kyle doesn't work with me, my boyfriend. But I do have management, and my management has a team. So that consists of my manager, a project manager for um, sponsored content that you guys see here on my channel. Um, they make sure that everything is delivered on time, and they're basically like 
the liaison between me and brands. And then I have my assistant, which I hired, I think it's almost been like a year and she has been such a lifesaver for me because I am such a mess when it comes to doing my job daily because I'm such a creative and I never thought that um, YouTube would become what it is today. Like I just didn't think it was that crazy of a job and I think it was like summer last year when I realized I couldn't do this by myself anymore. So I brought on my assistant Bianca who I consider also to be my friend. So I feel weird just calling her my assistant. Also my editor Mary, I couldn't get out as much content as I do without her. And now that there's more platforms like IGTV, TikTok, IG videos, IG stories, and then YouTube, there's just so much content that needs to be created at all times. It's hard to keep up with the various platforms and have enough content for everything. So, <sighs> look at the new packaging on the Dosa Colors eyeshadows. They recently changed it and now it's like a soft touch and each palette is the color. Uh, it color coordinates with the shadows inside. So this is the baked browns. Oh no, wait, I'm not starting with this one. I'm starting with Pretty Cool and it matches the cool tones in here. I'm gonna start with this guy right here. And I'm kind of doing my favorite look that still stands out in my mind that I did recently is from 12 Days of Christmas when I recreated Katie Jane Hughes's Fembot look, as she calls it. Taupey gray eyeshadow on the inner and outer corner and then silver and gold mixed together on the center of the eye and also like this inner corner. That to me was like the most flattering look I've ever done which is why I'm doing it for my birthday this year because I just love the way the eyeshadow made my eyes sort of like it made them cat-eyed without having to add an eyeliner and also smoky but not too smoky have you guys gotten super into TikTok because I need to I need to share my thoughts about TikTok with you guys okay I need to somewhat vent for a second so I feel like TikTok is having a moment right now because everyone's at home. It's really fun content to create. And I was resistant for a bit. I was like, I don't need to be on another platform. Like I said, I'm already like super overwhelmed with all the various platforms and kind of, you know, allocating different content for each platform. You really can't resist something when, you know, it's a part of your job. It's like this new platform, everyone's jumping on it. And it's just smarter to tr at least try it than to completely versus completely disregarding it, which is what I was doing at first. So anyway, I joined it. I thought it was hilarious. I feel like every other video I was like tapping on Kyle's shoulder like, you have to see this video, babe. Oh my God, this video is so funny. <laughs> After about a week of being on it, I feel like all the videos are the same. Is anyone else with me here? Am I the only one? I just feel like I've seen the Savage dance now a thousand times. I've seen the Tootsie slide a thousand times. Like. Maybe when the Savage Dance was popping, I was liking everyone's content, and so I got hit with a ton of that content. I will say TikTok's algorithm is really good, so I can see why everyone's jumping on it. If you want to grow right now, if you want to be a blogger, influencer, if you've been wanting to do this, I would say TikTok is a great place to start because everyone is experiencing pretty rapid growth on there. Um, the algorithm is just way better than what Instagram has become. I feel like now when people ask me if they should start, I'm like 100%, it's just on Instagram, it's a lot more difficult and you have to really baby that platform a lot. I feel like it requires a lot of attention and details. So TikTok is just, it's, it's such a great uh, tool to have, um, especially if you have any sort of skill that you've been wanting to share with the public that you know would then turn into you being an influencer full time, then you should 100% do it and see how you can really take advantage of TikTok and how people are growing on there. But you gotta find ways to be original because it's hard to lose me for a bit. I'm like, I don't wanna see one more savage dance. <laughs> Too much of a good thing is never a good thing. So it started off great, went downhill, and now I feel like I only go on it sporadically. Whereas when I first got it, I feel like I was spending a lot of time on TikTok just seeing like what was on there. I'm still not fully committed. I've only uploaded like two videos. Boomer's a natural at it, of course. My youngest child. If you're new to my channel, not my actual child, my youngest husky. My only videos on there are of him and like me doing a workout. <laughs> That's it. Okay, this is my favorite part of this entire look. I'm gonna go in with that shadow I was talking about. Riding high. 
as you should be on your birthday. Can I get this to focus? Thank you. Sorry I'm still getting used to this new setup, guys. I feel like I'm constantly going in and out of focus, even though I have like my camera setting to it shouldn't do that. But sh life is hard when you film yourself. <laughs> I need to get um, the, I think it's like the Canon app on my phone so that I can control my my camera through my phone. I saw Carly by Bell, who actually, fun fact, is the person who inspired me to start a YouTube channel uh, back in 2015. I just loved her energy, I loved her makeup, and that's what led to me pursuing a career as a freelance makeup artist and then transitioning into YouTube because I think YouTube was always on the back of my mind but it just sounded really scary or like sort of dumb to say back then like I want to do YouTube because it didn't seem like a real uh, job and I just I wasn't confident enough to say that and I think from uh, doing freelance makeup and really practicing my skills and getting better at makeup and then you know sharing it uh, on YouTube, I think that really helped build my confidence and got me to where I am today. When I first started doing makeup, I remember Kyle called me out and he said, how come when people ask you what you do, you say, I'm just a makeup artist. You say it like it's not important or like it really matters to you. And I was like, I just don't feel like I am a makeup artist. I feel like kind of dumb saying it. Like I definitely did not have confidence and it's been built over these past couple years. And I appreciate for you guys thinking that of me. Love you for that. <laughs> I want this to feel more get ready with me-ish, so I'm gonna put my mirror here. You guys can let me know afterwards if this kind of bothered you. <laughs> Always appreciate feedback. Um, another tip I wanna share with you guys, if I do eyes first, which I have been loving doing lately, is um, if I get a little bit of fallout and you know just a little bit, not a lot, I will pick up my moisturizer that I use to prep my skin with on a brush and I'll literally just buff out that fallout like so <gasps> and for my birthday foundation i am you know i was torn i was gonna use make it forever reboot because i love wearing this foundation all day long i will most likely wear it on my actual birthday uh you know with less makeup than what i'm wearing right now but i decided to go with the pat mcgrath labs skin fetish i love this foundation shade light medium 13 before I started on my face, I went into the kitchen because I was like, do we have any snacks? I want like a snack right now. But since we've been on lockdown, we've really been trying to avoid getting snacks that are unnecessary. I, we did it for like the first week. We bought like a bunch of just like random little goodies. Um, there's these, if you guys are familiar with Trader Joe's, they sell these chips. I've eaten them here on my channel. They're like, someone called them gentrified thuckies and I died laughing because they're basically like a knockoff of the OG thuckies, but like Trader Joe's version. <laughs> and they're so good, but, um, little update on my FODMAP journey because I get asked about that a lot since doing my last video, um, on what I eat in a day when I told you guys I do have... A digestive disorder not to be confused with an eating disorder I think when I say that people some people got it twisted digestive disorder in that I have complications um, digesting certain foods which uh, leads to me having IBS so the certain foods that are difficult for me to digest are considered high FODMAP foods um, there's a whole list on these foods okay they're literally like almost everything <laughs> But now I've gotten used to it with low FODMAP that I don't even think about those foods and I immediately know when they are high FODMAP. Um, so yeah, during low FODMAP, you're supposed to avoid eating high FODMAP foods in order to not trigger your symptoms. And then after a month of eating low FODMAP, you can reintroduce uh, these trigger foods to see, or you can reintroduce them uh, individually, um, one at a time to see what triggers you. So that way you know exactly what causes your digestive problems and not just like blame it on something like gluten or dairy. You have like an exact answer because um, all foods are classified under a certain uh, FODMAP category. Anyway, um, I have avoided going into the testing stage because I have been feeling so good that I am just... I'm avoiding it. I'm avoiding it because I love not being bloated, not being gassy, not having emergency runs to the bathroom. I've been feeling good. Um, but the other day, I decided to make 
corn knowing it is high FODMAP, but I had like this uh, bag of frozen roasted corn from uh, Trader Joe's that is so good. Like you can literally make like at home elote, like when you add like the, all the spices and whatnot. Um, Trader Joe's also makes one called everything but the elote seasoning. <laughs> so I got that seasoning. That's why I made the corn. And I know it's high FODMAP and I shouldn't eat it, uh, eat corn in large amounts, but it was so good that I was like, oh, well, I'm going to eat it anyway. I don't think corn affects me. My body does not like corn. This is the Fenty Beauty Concealer in shade 145. Now I know why growing up, I always had these digestive issues because growing up in a Mexican household, your primary dishes at dinner are like corn, beans, rice, and onions and garlic. I don't know of a single salsa that does not contain onions or garlic aside from the Fadi one that I recently bought, which is really good by the way, in case you have the same issue as me. Onions and garlic are like the number one triggers. So as for FODMAP updates go, all I know right now is that my body does not like elote, which is very tragic. Going against my own rules again, I'm gonna use this new Fenty Cream Bronzer. I dipped into it a little bit yesterday. Again, I was just kind of playing around with this makeup look. And I feel like this might be like the new Chanel cream bronzer, which I heard recently got reformulated and people weren't happy about it. But this one, it does come in three shades. This is like the medium shade, shade number three. So there's a lighter shade and a darker shade. The medium one matched me really well and I feel like it blended out so seamlessly, which for a cream bronzer is really important because it can easily start to look a little crazy. But look at this. Kyle's in the kitchen. Sorry. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Day 50 something of quarantine. Kyle's still in the kitchen. Now we got a little right here to define the collarbones. Look at that. Look at the difference. See that? Only for your birthday. I just feel like normally if I'm not wearing a top like this, which by the way is from the Camila Coelho collection. Collection. I love her collection. I feel like everything fits so well. And I am five feet tall, incredibly petite very square shaped and everything from her line fits so good. I've been trying to not buy things unless they are like, uh, like I actually run out of a makeup product because I'm trying to, I was going through all my makeup and I forgot, not even forgot. I didn't realize that eyeshadows also expire. I know skincare and a lot of um, like creamier, more liquid type products expire after you open them within 12 months. And I was going through all my drawers because I'm planning on doing like a Marie Kondo, does it spark joy uh, purge of all my makeup because honestly, I feel like I move so fast that sometimes I throw things back in the drawers and I don't even want to keep that makeup item, but just to like get it out of the way, I throw it in a drawer really quickly and some stuff in there is so, so old. Like eyeshadow palettes are expensive and for them to expire within a year, I'm kind of like bummed about that. I didn't realize that for some reason I thought eyeshadow palettes lasted longer than all other makeup, but they don't. And just so you guys know, I do donate um, makeup to a, a local makeup school here in LA called Makeup Designery Mud. Um, I donate to them stuff that maybe like I lightly swatched, so if a brand sends like multiple colors and I swatched it for the sake of showing you guys swatches, that is the kind of stuff that I'll give to the school because once it has been opened and touched, I'm not gonna do a giveaway and give that to you guys. I'm not gonna give you guys used makeup. I save stuff that comes that's like duplicates of something, um, brand new stuff that maybe I'm not gonna swatch it or use. Uh, I only give you guys the good stuff. I would never give you guys stuff that's old, expired, and used. I know some of you still want it, <laughs> but for safety concerns, especially right now with coronavirus, I am not gonna be giving you guys used makeup that has been touched by my hands, even though my hands are clean. Stuff that is like foundations or concealers that they're hard to give away because I don't know you guys' skin tones, um, and it makes it really difficult for a giveaway because I don't wanna give you guys the wrong shade. Um, I'll donate to the women's shelter in LA so they kind of um, request more so like everyday essentials, moisturizers, cleansers, uh, more like uh, personal care items and then for makeup more so like everyday wearable makeup so if they have like a job interview and stuff like that and then the new and the good stuff that's what I give away and save to you guys. For my blush I'm going to use this MAC So Natural Glow Play blush. 
same brush that I was using to set with powder. My blush always looks super strong on camera and I promise you it does not look that strong in person. I don't know why that is. It always does me dirty. For my birthday, I will wear the Revlon Skin Lights uh, Highlighter in Twilight Gleam shade 202. This is my favorite highlighter right now. I cannot get enough of it. I, I haven't even been using my super high-end ones because I think this one looks so beautiful. And I like to apply it first right after misting and then I'll mist it one more time to let it sink into the skin. And I think it's because the undertone in it is just perfect. So it doesn't stick out like a super gold or super pink highlight would. It kind of blends in really well with um, my skin tone. And it just looks so glossy. Oh, also the inner corner of the eyes. Almost done here. Like I've been sitting here for a very long time. It's coming together. I'm feeling very festive, guys. Might have to like bust out a tequila shot at 12.48. <laughs> in the afternoon. Um, I am going to finish this off with a nude lip. I'm using the Makeup Forever Artist Pencil in shade Anywhere Caffeine and Nude Kate by Charlotte Tilbury. Hey, she is ready for her 31st birthday. Should I put on the cardigan that goes with this top? I feel like I should to complete it. Even though a cardigan, I feel like, would take away from the, like, party Melissa. I feel like this is serious Melissa. If you button it once, you're like, oh, I have a very important uh, Zoom call this morning. And then if you take it off, you're like, time to party. I don't know, I kind of liked it without the cardigan. I mean, I keep calling it a cardigan. I kind of like it without the blazer. That's gonna be a wrap on today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed getting ready with me. I feel like this is very earthy, like my Taurus self. If you share a birthday with me or have a birthday that has happened during quarantine or is gonna happen during quarantine, I hope that you turn this on and get ready with me as well so that we can celebrate together. Eat all the sugar you want. Just a little bit, just a little bit if you're 21 and up. And um, enjoy the day. I love you guys. Hit that subscribe button if you didn't already. Share this video with anyone else who is celebrating their birthday and looking for a go-to look. And of course, don't forget, there's that fly. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.